Hey guys, it's Alexandra. Today I'm going to be interviewing Amanda and she can talk to dead people. So she's going to be talking about her ability and how she knew she got this gift and the skepticism surrounding mediums. I think you guys will learn a ton. So stay tuned and subscribe for more videos. All right, thanks. Good. So I just happened to come across you on my TikTok for you page and I thought what you have the ability to do is so unique. And I would love to talk more about when you discovered you could talk to dead people and what that means. Yeah, I had never posted anything about it or even really talked to anybody about it unless I was connecting them with somebody that they had lost. So I was really going out on a limb there, but I'm glad I did. I would have never met you or been able to do this, but um, I guess it kind of, it started when I, I didn't even really know when it started because it's never not happened for me. So I used to draw before I could verbalize what I saw. So when I was probably two, when I first was able to hold a pencil, I used to draw little circles on any piece of paper I could found, or find, like envelopes, notepads, literally even bills that we got in the mail, just anything I could get my hands on. And my mom thought maybe I was autistic because I wasn't speaking. And at the same time, I had these habits to draw the same thing over and over again. So she thought like something's off and wanted to take me to a child psychologist. And one of my grandmothers actually majored in psychology. So when we were at her house one day, she, my mom kind of brought it up, you know, and my grandma picked up the piece of paper that I was doing my thing on and asked me, she said, Amanda, what are you drawing? And I didn't talk, so I didn't answer her. And she noticed that in every single circle I drew, I did two little dots. And so she pointed to the dots and she asked me, she said, what are these inside the circle? And I said, eyes. And so that's when my mom was like, she's drawing faces. And I didn't hear about that story until just recently. I told my mom that, <laughs> yeah, right? Well, I was so young, I didn't ever, wasn't stuck in my head, I didn't remember it. but. She was like, that's kind of when I realized that you were seeing something because that was just an odd thing to draw. But it wasn't until that story that I put on TikTok that she realized someone really was speaking to me because she hoped I was crazy and not seeing dead people. <laughs> right. So could you um, share that story again just for people that didn't see the video? Yeah. So yeah, like I said, my mom always was kind of in denial just would rather it have been something else because that's creepy you know but uh she was kind of at her wits end with the whole thing I was about five six seven closer to five and six and she just could not take it anymore I couldn't sleep at night I had panic attacks every night when I was getting tucked into bed and she's like you're five you need to calm down so I was kind of expressing to her at that point what I was seeing and of course she didn't believe it because she didn't see it so she kind of had three options either i was a crazy person which i understand i was making it up for attention or i really was seeing dead people and i wasn't sleeping i was in her room it was the middle of the night and so she started searching home blessings like an exorcism on homes priests pastors anything she could find and i stood up from the foot of her bed and walked over to her footstool and I looked at her and I remember I could see the back of her computer. It said Toshiba on it. Like that's in my memory. And I just said, mom, he says, don't do it. And she like looks up from her computer and she says, don't do what? And I said, he says, don't call a priest. And that's when my mom realized, like I said, somebody was standing over her shoulder, reading off her computer screen and telling me what she was seeing. So I, I couldn't read. I didn't know what a priest was. So my mom was just like, that was horrible. And she called the priest after that. We had a home uh, blessing done and it didn't help. So the next thing we went with was my brother went to our local Catholic church and we weren't Catholic, but they had holy water and she was Googling that holy water helps. So we were really kind of flying blind and they went and they had a Gatorade bottle. And I remember seeing the Gatorade bottle, like I remember little things, but I was so young, I didn't remember these stories. And the label had been torn off the Gatorade bottle, but I recognized it. And my brother was dumping the Gatorade into his hand 
and putting it along the like door frames. He was sprinkling it in the corner of my room. And my mom looked back at me and I had my hands covering my ears and I was rocking back and forth. And she was like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, he's screaming, you need to stop, you need to freaking stop. And I was like, around the same age, I was cussing, I was saying the F word, I was saying, oh shit, all of that kind of stuff. So my mom was like, she doesn't even know what's in the Gatorade bottle. It was holy water. So wow. that's when my mom was like, oh shoot, like the pieces were just kind of coming together and she realized what was happening. So how did the other people in your family react? Well, my mom was actually the most skeptical of it. My dad also sees things, but we don't talk about it in our family. Like me posting that and me talking about it now is kind of a big deal. But my mom knew that my dad saw things because when they were dating, they have been dating since they were 15. When they were dating and they got married, my dad kind of brought it up at one point when they moved into this house together with their family. And uh, he brought up the fact that there was a little girl there. And he had actually seen, <laughs> the way our house was, was you walked in on the second story and you could go down the stairs to the first. So you had, our stairs led up to our living room and there was a railing that you could kind of see over the living room into. And my dad had tucked us into bed, me and my brother. And it was pretty late at night. And he turned around and he saw me sitting, standing on the staircase, peeking through the railing at him. And he was like, I'm going to bust her for being out of bed. So he jumped over the couch and came running after me. And I took off down the stairs, ran down to the hall. My dad caught up with me and he opened my bedroom door and I was asleep in bed. And so he was like, maybe it was t my brother Tyler's. So he opens my brother's door, same thing. And he shuts my brother's door and turns around and he sees the little girl standing at the end of the hall. And he just like kind of ignored it, went back upstairs. So he was used to it, but I didn't know my dad saw things until I was around 11 or 12. And I walked into my bedroom and there was a little girl sitting on the back of my bed. And she stood up from my bed frame, stood on the mattress, hopped onto the floor and walked up to me and asked me, will you come play with me? And at that point, my best option was I was trying to ignore them just because what was happening was so violent and everything in the house was so negative. So I shut my door, walked away, walked upstairs. My dad was in the hall and I never really talked about it, but I was like, dad, there's a little girl in my room. And he went white, jaw dropped. And he was like, Amanda, I want to let you know I've seen that little girl too. So my dad was never... My dad was never cold about it, but he never talked about it either. My mom was the one who was like, you're crazy. So my family's always been really open to it. But then my brother and I are, he's two years older than me. We're around the same age. So when the really bad things were happening in the house, my parents didn't want me to talk in front, like, in front of him about it. So they told me that if I ever wanted to let them know that the demon was there to blink twice and that they'd understand, but I wasn't allowed to talk about it. And so that's what I used to do. And so now me and my brother were 20, or I'm 19, almost 20, and he's 22. And we just started talking about it recently. And I told him about the whole blinking twice thing. And he was like, I thought something was wrong with you. Like you had a tick. I used to see you blinking twice and I just never understood why. So he was super open to it too, because while he didn't see those things, he had the experiences in the house. like our TV and our game room would always turn on and off. Like that was just a particularly bad room or our kitchen was pretty messed up too. And our cup cabinet would open and we had all glass cups. So bad on our part, but the demon would take cups out and throw them at us. So my brother saw those things happening, but didn't see what was doing it like I did. So for us to talk about it later and be able to be like, we experienced the same things and now I can tell him what was doing it kind of it was cool for us you know what I mean yes so when you experience these type of things are you always seeing things or is it ever just like sensing a spirit of some sort yeah that a really good question it's like super hard to describe um sometimes I see them clear as day like you're standing in front of me talking to me right now like I can see their facial features what color their hair is what they're wearing 
but sometimes I'm just sitting there with somebody in a restaurant I'll be like you know like I I feel like your grandmother is here. Like it's definitely a motherly spirit, but she's on the older side. So that's how I connect it to a grandmother. Or sometimes I'm, I know it's a grandmother because I can see her. So it just depends. But sometimes it's almost hard to hear them. Like uh, if you're on a phone call with someone and the connection is bad, I always say it's like radio static. So sometimes it's hard for me to completely hear them or I'll hear bits and pieces. But sometimes if they're really good at connecting and I'm on it for the day, I don't really know what the difference is, but sometimes I can see them perfectly. Wow. And do you, is this something that you've shared with other friends, like outside of your family? No, not yeah. really. Um, I, I'm 19. I've been seeing them my whole life. I never spoke about it. But recently I was with, I was actually headed to a party, to a sleepover with I think there were 12 girls there and I hadn't met but one of them one time. So I was going really out of my comfort zone anyways. And on my way there, a woman appeared in my passenger seat while I was driving and she was just hanging out. And she was like, you need to get a hold of Rose. And I was like, okay, like, can you give me some more? Like, I'm literally headed here. You got to give me a little more than that to work with it. And she was like, um, I want to talk to Marie. And I was like, Marie or Rose, make a choice, you know, like, who am I going to try to talk to when I get here? And then she left. And I was like, not cool. You left me with nothing to work with. So I was not in my comfort zone and I was not going to bring it up. And then towards the end of the night, we were going to watch a scary movie. And one of the girls was like, Kaylee, Kaylee, like, tell him about, uh, your boyfriend's girlfriend or whatever she was like I swear she's possessed and just like told us this story of crazy stuff that she had done and I was like now's my chance so I gotta bring it up but I had before that gotten all of the girls instagrams there and looked at their names and there was not a rose there so I was like I'm not gonna bring it up but when they brought that up I was like I should just shoot my shot like they seem pretty open to it because some people aren't so I said, like, this is going to sound really odd, you guys, but is anybody here named Rose? And they all looked at one girl. So I was like, thank God. I'm not, like, I know I'm not crazy. Like, things like that happen, and I'm like, I'm not crazy. So I, like, looked at her, and I was like, are you, are you open to talking about someone who came through who's passed away? And she was like, of course. So I was like, thank goodness that she was open to it. So I brought it up. I said, she's asking for a rose. But like I said, I knew none of you guys were named Rose because of your Instagram names. And I go, I think it was your grandmother. And she said, my middle name is Rose and I'm named after my grandmother. Wow. So I was like, that's awesome. So I said, she's trying to get a hold of a Marie. Do you know a Marie? And she goes, that's my mother's middle name. So I told her, I said, I, I literally don't have a message, like, I'm sorry, this is kind of a lame one, but she was really wanting to get a hold of your mom, just, like, let your mom know that she's with her if your mom is open to it, but she's pretty persistent on getting a hold of your mom, and she pulled me aside later and told me that I'm not the first medium to connect to her grandma, Rose, and that she said the same thing to the other medium, and the other medium, that was all she got also. So a little frustrated with Grandma Rose. Why didn't she give me a little more info if I was talking to her so clearly? But that was probably the first time on such a large scale that I told any of my friends about it. And they were all really, really open and really, really kind about it. So awesome. kind of scared me a little less to be able to do something like this and right. post that video that I did. Yeah, absolutely. And I know it seems to me that our generation is much more like into this kind of stuff. Anyone that I talk about this kind of stuff with is like, oh my gosh, like that's so cool. But of course there are people that think you're lying. What is your, what do you think about that? Like, what's your take on that when people say there's um, no way you're, I think you're definitely just making that up. I try to just be understanding, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. honestly, if someone came to me and told me this stuff and I didn't see things, I would think they were a crazy person. So I don't want to, I don't want to judge or be upset with them for that, but there was this one time, um, my grandpa died before I was born, and he was my father's dad. He came into the room one day, 
and had this great, like three hours. We talked for three hours about so much, about every single family member that he wanted to get a message across to. And the most specific one was to my grandmother. And he's like, you need to remind her about today. And I was like, she had a stroke. And so her memory is kind of shot. I was like, you know what? You need to tell me what today is. And I'll happily ask her if she remembers. But you need to tell me what it is. So if she doesn't remember, she's not brokenhearted that she can't remember the date with her first husband who's passed away. And he was like, she'll know. So I really went out on a limb. I got a hold of my aunt, who's very, very close with her, her mom, my grandmother, and waited until she was home. Finally got a hold of her, called her, and asked her, I said, does today mean anything to you? And she was like, oh my gosh, I have been looking at the calendar all day, and I know today is special, but I can't tell you why. Like, do you know? Like, why? Like, that's so random that you'd bring it up. And I was like, you're, my grandpa Stan, like, your husband is with me right now. And she just starts bawling. And he goes, the letters. Ask her about the letters. And so I was like, he's in an army uniform. So I'm kind of starting putting things together because he can't be so specific. He just tells me. He has to make me guess. So I was like, was, was he in the military? And she said, yeah. And I said, were you guys together when he was in the military? She said, yes. So then I was like, brought up the letters. I said, is there any chance that you guys wrote letters back and forth to each other? And she went constantly while he was there. So I said, maybe you should go through the letters. And so she did and ended up finding what it was. But my aunt, who was super close with her, had never even heard of these letters. Nobody in our family knew about them except my, gran my grandma and my late grandpa. So my aunt got to go through all these letters from her father. And I remember my aunt called me back after that. And she, like, no judgment, is the kindest person I've ever met. But she said, I have, I have nerve damage. And she asked me, Amanda, can I ask you what medicine you've taken today? I was like, ouch. Like, did I not just prove that I was speaking to him? Because I knew about the letters. But I was like, I haven't taken anything, but it's all good, no stress. So I was really, really bummed out that my aunt was thinking I was crazy. But like I said, I understand. So my aunt came to my house a couple months ago and she came up to me and she asked Amanda, do I have anybody with me? I was like, so now you're interested? <laughs> but I was like, actually you do. And she goes, what's his name? I was like, don't ask me specifics. Like they don't work with me. I work for them. They tell me what they want. And he's, he said, Jeff. And so I was like, Jeff? And his name was either Joe or Jeff, something super close. I was mishearing, or maybe he was messing with me. And she was like, yeah, like, what can you tell me about him? And I could see him. I was like, he's in almost like a janitor's outfit. Like, it's all gray, like super weird, but he's not a janitor. I was like, he has short hair, mustache, none of that really matters, about your height. And this is really odd. I feel like I feel like he died slowly, but I also feel like he died in an airplane accident. So I don't know why I'm getting those two because they don't really go together, you know? Like I'm talking drawn out years of a death. And she says he had cancer for two years, but he worked on airplanes. So sometimes I have to figure things out for myself because I don't always get things clear as day. But after that, she really believed me. And then I started going into what he used to say and I was like he's not like I don't want to be insensitive but he's not here for you Aunt Jerry he's here for somebody else not Mark either who's her husband I was like maybe your son like was were he and Noah close and she starts getting pretty emotional and she said yes and then he <laughs> Jeff says clear as day Noah reminds me so much of myself and so I tell her that and she breaks down, like that was the end for her. She said, that is exactly what he used to say. And Noah was the one person in our family who didn't get to come home from school because of Corona and say goodbye. So I was like, I nailed it. Like that's who he's here for. That's what he wanted to get across. And I haven't seen him since. So he got off what he wanted to say and it was all good. And she believes me now, but I really try not to judge them because it is kind of crazy what I do. Right. And what would you say, since you don't really have the choice, you were given this 
ability and you didn't choose to have it, what would you say are the best parts of having the skill and the hardest parts? Um, I'm going to start with the best because the hardest part sucks, but just like the stories that I just told you, you know what I mean? Getting to help people like that's, that's something no one else gets to do. And I've always, I really wanted to be a trauma surgeon, like facial reconstruction for the money, which is super, super selfish of me to say, but I wanted to have a big family and I wanted to be able to support them. So for me, that was my option. And then when I was going into high school the summer before I started freshman year, I got shingles, which I don't know like that's what you heard of or if you've heard of it, but um, you don't really get it if you're under 60. <laughs> and I, w I had a super, super odd case. So I was misdiagnosed five times by five different doctors. And when I was finally diagnosed correctly, the doctor sent me home without any medicine. And my mom was doing research by day two. I couldn't walk to the bathroom by myself. And so my mom started checking out what shingles was and I needed to be on antivirals right away. And it had been a week since I got sick. So it caused nerve damage in my spine. And I wasn't with the, I take medical marijuana. With the medicine I take, I can't be a trauma surgeon. Like I wouldn't want someone high working on me. So I, I wouldn't want to do it. And I kind of had that option taken away from me. So I feel like it really humbled me to be able to help people in a completely different way that I'm not even ever gonna, I don't wanna ever charge for or get paid for. Like, this is something that I get to do to help people that no one else gets to do. So that's something that I really try to focus on that maybe I got sick for a reason. So I'm chalking it up to that. So that's probably the most positive part. But sometimes it used to be really sucky. I lived in a really, haunted home like it sounds super dumb to say out loud but that place was messed up so I dealt with that demon the most most of my childhood it followed me to school it followed me to I did karate it followed me to after school practices to church even like I literally could not get away from it and I'm 19 I'm just gonna be full honest I still sleep with my head under my covers because I used to as a child so now I can't not so it was just terrifying. I used to have panic attacks because of it. So I kind of feel like I lost a lot of good things in my childhood. I couldn't spend the night at friends' houses because he would follow me there and literally torture me and my friends. So I didn't want to put them through that. So I kind of felt like my best option was to be in my own room, in my own home, where I could cry all night when I was having the panic attacks and hide under the covers, try to make it better. So I missed a lot growing up, but since I got older and we moved out of that house, those experiences with that particular demon stopped. So I mostly deal with spirits now, like people who have passed and not demonic things, which is a game changer, <laughs> like made it so much easier on me. But like the other night, probably less than a week ago, I saw another demon and I do every once in a while, but really messed me up again but I'm 19 now and they say like you have power over them not the other way around they feed on fear that kind of stuff so I literally I was in the car with my boyfriend who probably thinks I'm insane now and I turned around and I was like you need to get the f out of here like I don't know who you think you are this would have worked when I was six and it did work when I was six but I'm I'm an adult now like give it your best shot but everything that you're putting in this to terrify me is just wasting your energy. And at this point, I feel sorry for you. And he left. So that was the first time in my life that I've ever been able to tell one of them to leave, and they did. So it's getting easier, I guess, as I get older, dealing with those bad things, even though most of the time I don't have to. But the good things definitely make those bad things worth it. And what do you think, because there are so many skeptics around this topic, what do you wish more people would understand about your ability? I don't even necessarily want them to understand because I don't think you can fully understand unless you've seen it firsthand or experienced something similar to what I have. But I would like, I'm sure you've seen some of the comments on that picture or video I posted. Some people are just mean. So 
I just wish people would be nicer, I guess. Or if they don't believe, just be like, that's crazy, you know? Like, we all have our own things. Even if I am crazy, like, don't be mean about it. Um, I was at that girl, her name was Aspen, the one who ended up being, having the middle name Rose. Mm -hmm. So she was super open to it after that. Um, I met her boyfriend for the first time a few, maybe a weekend ago. Uh, he barbecued for me and my boyfriend, so there were a few people there. And Aspen knows what I do now, and so she asked me. She was super nice about it. She said, is there anyone here? And I was like, such a funny question, but yes, always. I see them everywhere. I said, uh, Nick's mom is like a freaking walking party. When she came into the room, she had a group, but like an entourage, so many people with her. And she goes, no way. I know a lot of her family has passed, but her and Nick have been dating for about six months. She doesn't know a lot about his mom and the people she's lost. And I said, the person who stepped forward the most was his Nick's grandmother, her mother, like her real mother. And she looks at me and she's like, Amanda, you're off. His, mom, his mom's mom's not dead. And I was like, oh, my bad. Must have been somebody else. That's just who I thought. And she goes, are you okay if I call Nick over? He doesn't believe in that stuff and tell him about it. And at this point, I was like, go for it. Like, at least Aspen knows I'm not crazy. And so Nick comes over and she like calls him down and she says, hey, your grandmother is here. And Nick looks at me and he goes, she died two days ago. And Aspen says, babe, you didn't tell me that. And he was like, I didn't really want to talk about it yet. So sometimes it can be a little bit awkward when they don't want to talk about it and I'm just casually bringing it up. But uh, like I said, Nick believes now. So sometimes it's nice to be able to prove it, you know, and be like, I told you I'm not crazy. Some of us are, I'm sure, but at least I'm not, or at least about that. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. I think it's so interesting to hear from somebody who has seen the skepticism and still has to deal with it. you still have to deal with it every day regardless of what people think so right <laughs> it's almost like people can say what they want but you're the one that feels it at the end of the day yeah so thank you so much for sharing it and I think people will learn so much from you yeah I hope so that's my goal with talking to you and posting that video so thanks for calling me and reaching out I've never done anything like this it was super fun yeah of course it was so great to meet you yeah, you too. I'll talk to you later, probably. All right. Sounds good. Bye. Thank you.